we will bring the regular Board of Education study session, oh, I'm sorry, uh, open session at um, 817, and we'll open in, in honor of 717. Um, I'm on, obviously, on the, somebody else's time. Um, and we'll open in the honor of Andrew Boyle, who is a child of Plymouth Elementary teacher, Mickey Boyle. Congratulations to the Boyle family, and welcome to the world, Andrew. Um, we will ad also uh, adjourn our special board of education closed session. We took no reportable action, and we will adjourn our special board of education study session. Again, we took no reportable action. I'd like to thank you all for being so patient, and we're tar sorry for being tardy by 15 minutes. I know we're expected to be in class on time like everybody else. Um, we were trying to get things done as fast as we could, and I thank you for your patience. Um, Mr. Uh, Wong, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Can you please stand? <laughs> Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We um, have two things that we're going to move up. There are quite a number of people here who are going to be recognized. So we're going to move 3.1.1 up in front of 3.1. And then we'll also move uh, 7.5 up into the order of business just before public comment in order to be able to facilitate the max amount of people in the least amount of time. And so um, may I please have a motion for the approval of minutes? So moved. Second. Motion is second. May we have a vote, please? Board Member Zuko? Yes. Board Member Wong? Yes. Board Member Williams? Yes. Board President Hammond? Yes. Motion carries 4 0. Up first, we're going to have a um, Duke is here to introduce us to a fantastic group of people who have spent countless hours helping to tutor um, students in the Monroeville Unified School District. And I'm going to let Duke talk about it because he talks about it better than anybody else. I've never seen anybody love something so much in my life as <laughs> Duke you, loves this. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Fifteen years ago, uh, the Proactive Food Tutoring Program was founded here in Monrovia. It's, it, it's a wonderful Monrovia community. That's what makes everything so exciting. Uh, we, we had many uh, organizations. Monrovia Reads was our founding organization, the Boys and Girls Club, um, the the uh, Rotary, uh, the Monrovia Public Library, everybody contributed, as well as, of course, the Monrovia School District. The Monrovia School District uh, provided us with uh, opportunities and sites that were just amazing, uh, led by Dr. Therosian and uh, Dr. Kaiser. Uh, the district office has been just so supportive. And of course, last but not least, the, the board itself, we have always had tremendous support from the board. The board has been there for us, and that's what makes it so successful. Uh, and we can see some of these banners. Hopefully, we have a part of that. Um, the, literally, we have, have thousands of, of tutorial hours over that 15 years. Absolutely amazing the number of hours. I tried figuring it out one time, and I think I left, lost count at 100,000. But the tutorial hours. And this year alone, we had 102 tutors from five colleges, from Citrus, from Cal Poly, from PCC, from Cal State LA and Cal State Long Beach. We've had five uh, colleges. We had many Monrovia high school volunteers from AP and honors classes. We had middle school volunteers from our honors math classes. And all of these students came this year and, uh, and gave us a great help. Tonight, we are honoring 58 Monrovia High School students and 38 middle and college students um, and their families. And the reason I say families are, uh, we always say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, and that's exactly the truth. In meeting these families, you'll know where these tutors get their drive and their compassion and their caring feelings. It's because of the families and the support the families give them that they in turn uh, come to us and support us. It's just been an amazing, amazing situation. Um, 
And tonight, but tonight we are basically celebrating these heroes. These are young people who after a long day of school, academically, they're, they're going into tough classes at the end of the day, they go and hustle themselves over to the public library, I mean, and, and some of them, and we, we go, go, for, go to the school libraries, and they uh, become big brothers and sisters to struggling young Monrovians. To our sixth graders and to our ninth graders who are struggling, they're at a new school for the first time. To kids who just have a math problem or a, or a, a science uh, qu question that they need answered. Our tutors are there for them. They're big brothers and sisters. They're giving them a great amount of help. And, when I, and I'm there and watching this every day. I'm just absolutely uh, flabbergasted by their, by their dedication. And when I'm there, I always ask them, why are you tutoring? And you know, some of them, I'm sure, say, well, you know, we enjoy the fact that we, get, that we can put this on our college resumes and we can uh, get a job uh, uh, application, it helps on a job application, and we do get recognized by the wonderful school board, and uh, we also, uh, you know, we have, there are little perks that, that are doing it, but their number one reason is to help another human being, to help another human being. That's what they say, and that's exactly what, if you see them in action, that's exactly what they're doing. Now, one of our PAT mottos is service is love made visible. We're always taught to love our neighbor, right? Well, these students are making that love visible by their service. Their service has been absolutely amazing. The tutors are great examples of service at its best. So I want to thank the families, thank the uh, tutors for paying it forward, the education that you've received in Monrovia schools, and the education you received in your homes from your parents and from your, your siblings. This is, you're paying that forward to other struggling young Monrovians. And when people ask, what is great about America? You know that question's always asked? You are what's great about America. So thank you very much, and uh, uh, Rob, thank you. And I, what I will do, uh, we're gonna call your name. As your name is called, come up. We'll shake hands with the board. If you don't mind standing over there for just a second, we're gonna have a, a picture, I think, at the end. And then we're all gonna move over to the, uh, the Early Learning Center and the all-purpose room over there. And then we're gonna have the drawing for some Disneyland tickets. Uh, Boys and Girls Club has given us some Park Hopper Disneyland, because they're gold. Park Hopper Disneyland tickets. And we have four envelopes with the consolation oh, prize of $20 oh, in each one of those. So this is what the, the, the drawing will be. But you'll also receive, and this is important, you will also receive from the school board a letter of, I mean, a certificate of appreciation. This is what it looks like. It's a beautiful, beautiful certificate. You receive this along with your community service hours, and it says, this, this, for your role in the Project PASS program through the empowerment of Monrovia School District students towards academic success. And it's signed by the, Rob Hammond, the board, mem the board president, and all the board, the board members for Dr. Therosian, our superintendent, and myself. So you'll get to receive Roll these that. certificates and your certificate of community service over there. So I'm gonna call the names right now. I timed it, it should take three minutes, uh, <laughs> I hope. Uh, but uh, and we'll 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 finish that off and uh, we'll have them come up and, and shake hands with the board and then just wait over there quickly for a ticket. Okay, um, let's start. We'll start out with um, Monrovia High School. All right, uh, Lauren Alvarez. I know Lauren's here. Lauren Alvarez, come on up, Lauren. Yeah. If you want to, you know, it might be better if we just held our applause to the end and, and clap for them all. Uh, Anna Aver Ar Aravalo. Jose Estraquilo, Brian Alvarado, Ian Alvarado, Ivan Alvarado, the Alvarados have to be, uh, Clarissa Aquino, I saw Clarissa here today, uh, Ulysses Avila, Tyler Bernardino, I saw but Tyler, uh, Matias Bronchia, Maritza Cardoza, Alex Chio Guterres, Alexandra Correa, I saw Alexandra here, Angela Delgado, John Dimitri, Amanda Ekroth, Ekroth Dominique Elahi, Vanessa Farley, 
Mary Fellner, Kim Francis, Valerie Garcia, Daisy Garcia, Andrea Goodwin, Sophia Goodwin, Edward Gutierrez, Hunter Hawthorne, Faith Hawthorne, Jacqueline Hernandez, Leanne Lamb, Karina Lizama, Mark Mendez, Lisette, Lisette Mendoza, Andrea Nordal, Melissa Palmares, Sandra Pasillas, Samantha Pinto, Donna Rivas, Jacob Rodriguez, Victor Rosas, Freddie Rosero, Joshua Sherry, Troy Tevenjar, Ashley Taylor, Marjorie Thomas, Yasmin Vasquez, Brandon Yee, and that's the high school. Now the middle school students at Santa Fe, and I saw Dr. Uh, Sweeney here today. Uh, again, she, she, she broke some engagement just to be here to honor you guys. Um, Anaya Berry, Alan Calderon, Daniel Cruz, Alyssa De La O, Leona De, La Ru De Los Rios, Vanessa Duarte, Veronica F Foxworthy, Daniel Gomez, Edward Hernandez, Daniel Hernandez, Benjamin Jimenez, Michael Jordan, Haley Jorner, Chandra Kirkhoff, Georgina Medina, Michael Molina, Lucy, Lucy Nortman, Desiree Perez, Janine Perez, Andrea Rendon, Elizabeth Rojas, Ryan Ronderis, Anthony Romero, Kate Tadeo, Kalani Tagavilla, uh, Yasmin Viveros, Lali Viscaria, Corey Wu. And last but not least, a few of our, high school, our college students actually volunteered some time for us over in the library, so I had to include them tonight. Cassidy Aparicio, Alisa Aparicio, Monique Enriquez, Anna Galvez, Maria Mar Marlene Gutierrez, Soshi Gomez, Maria Lizama, Veronica Lizama, Patricia Moya, and Faith Talbert. Thank you guys. You are absolutely wonderful. Now, <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sorry, Georgie Figueroa. Where's Georgie? Come on, I saw him earlier, one of our best tutors. We can't forget him. And if anybody else, if anybody else has been, for any reason, we didn't get on this list, come on up and we'll shake your hand and we'll put you on the list. Do we miss a couple? Oh my gosh, how do we do that? You guys are the, these are the quiet tutors to kind of sneak in on us. All right, good, thank you. All right, we'll get some, we'll get some pictures and then we'll get out of here. We're going over to the, to the boardroom. All you the parents and everything come with us. The door will be open. We'll go over there. It'll be very short. We'll give out the uh, uh, all the certificates, and then we'll, that'll be it. And I'll be very brief while they're getting that. Well, stay here. Stay here. And with deep appreciation, Duke, none of this would happen without you. Thank you. That's for you. Dick, you come up here too.
But that is a fantastic group of people that have spent so many hours making sure that our students get the skills they need so they can, they can compete in the world. It's just fantastic, and Duke does a fantastic job. Um, up next, we'll have the Monrovia Chamber of Commerce, and who's going to, well, with the cooperation of the Board of Ch uh, Chamber of Commerce and the Board of Education, we are going to be introduced to some very fantastic uh, people at a couple of our schools. Um, at who is, is Miss Dyrek is here? Ah, there she is. <laughs> to tell it, introduce the community to a couple of very outstanding people from Brad Oaks Elementary. Okay, let me just make sure everything's where it needs to be. Okay, <clears throat> good evening. Um, my first, my first person I get to honor is Miss Stacy Bender. So Stacy, can you come on up? Okay, so Stacy, listen real close, okay? Here we go. <laughs> Stacy has been a true blessing to Brad Oaks. She returns to Brad Oaks after being gone for three years, only to find that many of her initiatives have been, have been implemented and stood the test of time and are directly aligned to positive behavior interventions and supports. She is a natural at passing out Bobcat Bucks, organizing the Roar Store, utilizing restorative justice and conflict resolution techniques, and dressing up in any crazy themed costume we feel is appropriate. <laughs> when Stacy returned to Brad Oaks, the roar awakened. Get it, right? Yeah, yeah she gets it. Stacy has been my right hand woman, at woman as we successfully help staff and students learn, laugh, and enjoy the school year. Staff members have said, <clears throat> There are no words to explain how happy we are that Stacy is back. We are grateful for all of her experience and ideas. In meetings with parents, she is extremely effective and full of great resources. She connects well with students of all ages, supports the staff in all areas, and organizes programs and projects to reach out to our students. <clears throat> the force is strong with this one. Congratulations, Stacy Bender, Employee of the Month. I came 
to Monrovia back in 2007 as an intern. And I had the privilege of working with Loretta Whitson. And Lisa Robinson was my site supervisor at Clifton. I learned so much from them both, and they were incredible mentors. And then Lisa became my colleague when Monrovia got their first elementary counseling grant. And I'm so grateful to work with you again and to call you my friend. <laughs> and um, Brad Oaks. Coming back to Brad Oaks this summer felt like coming home. The teachers, the staff, your dedication to your work, to your students, you inspire me every day. I truly enjoy working with them. Our fierce leader, Mrs. Dyrek, you and your staff are doing extraordinary things at Brad Oaks, and I'm so happy and honored to call it my home and to work in this community and the number one reason why I do get out of bed every morning, and sometimes that's really difficult for me, but um, it's for the kids. And I am so honored just to be a part of their lives and to make a difference. So thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Judy Watkins, can you please come up, please? Yay! Yay. <laughs> Judy Watkins. Judy is considered the heart of Team 44. She is the mastermind behind the themed parties Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, Polar Express, and Cinco de Mayo. Judy is a great instructional aide who does whatever it takes for her students to be successful. Her work ethic is excellent. She is innovative and makes lessons enjoyable. Staff has said she is excellent with kids. She treats children with respect and kindness, has a calm and, a calm and wonderful manner, and is pleasant and sincere. I have truly enjoyed working with Judy and I'm thankful that she is a Bobcat. Congratulations to Miss Judy Watkins, Employee of the Month. Um, nobody told me how to make a speech, so I came unprepared. Um, this is really an honor, and um, the type of job that I have, I wouldn't trade it for nothing. And I have been with Monroe for 15 years. It's three years now at Brad Oaks. It was hard to leave a home, my family, but I have a new family now, and I love you guys and you just took me under your wing when I came, and Amy, you have been a blessing to me, along with Ani, where's Ani? There you are. And um, you know, you guys are terrific, and um, I hope many more years at Brad Oaks. Thank you.
we have up next, next we have uh, Principal Ayers, who's going to introduce some great people from Wild, Wild Rose. Good evening. I would like to invite up Sarah Torres to the front. So Sarah Torres is our office manager at Wild Rose, and it's been about a year now that she's held that position at our school. And I have to say that within a year, Sarah has gone above and beyond her duties when it comes to supporting the staff and the students and the parents. Sarah juggles thousands of things and responsibilities all at one time. She offers technology support. Don't you know she can take apart her computer and put it back together, but she doesn't do that at, at work. She does that at home for fun, but not, not school computers, just others that she finds laying around. It's, it's quite a talent that she has. So she is, she is our technology person when our technology person is not on campus. She provides magic medicine for boo-boos in the, in the office, and she lends an empathetic ear um, when necessary for staff, students, or parents, and she enforces procedures to help our office run efficiently. There is nothing that student there is nothing that Sarah wouldn't do for our staff and students. She was previously an instructional aide at CELC and she therefore understands how much support the classroom and the students need. Miss Sarah herself is actually a, a reward for our most challenging students. Some students work for certificates or maybe they might work for candy or a pat on the back. We have students that work for spending time with Miss Sarah. She will go out and she will have lunch with them. She's even been caught sitting on the office floor having a picnic um, with a student. She has pretzels in her desk that she will occasionally bring out to entice our most needy students to have a conversation with her during the day if they're having a rough time. So many of our students look forward to spending time with Miss Sarah. She listens sympathetically to them and she always offers kind words and encouragement. The parents have appreciated her follow through as she responds quickly to their needs. Sarah goes above and beyond her office duties every day. She truly deserves the recognition of Outstanding Employee of the Month at Wild Rose. Congratulations. <laughs> She doesn't want to say anything. <laughs> oh, yes. She says, Are you going to give me my certificate? <laughs> I would love to give you your certificate. I'm sure it is in this pile. Here you go. See, she keeps me in line, too. Next, I would invite Lisa Robinson up to the front. Come on up, Lisa. I think we have a theme going this evening that we are, are celebrating our counselors. Lisa is, a <laughs> is the elementary counselor at Wild Rose, and we believe that you are an A++++ employee. And I know that those A's for you stand for attendance, <laughs> attitude, and academics. But for us, it stands for awesome. So we are very excited to have um, Lisa up here to recognize tonight because she works tirelessly 
to improve attendance on our school campus. She works closely with the families at Wildrose to offer them support. She does an outstanding job, just as Stacy does at Brad Oaks, implementing our positive behavior intervention system. Lisa can be found in the classrooms, helping students earn their rewards, helping them stay on track, helping them calm down when they're angry, or helping them lessen their anxieties about an upcoming test. She constantly can be found out on the yard, helping students get along with each other and pr using anti-bullying techniques. Lisa does a great job at, pro at, at promoting a positive growth mindset on our campus, and she has helped many of our students use these strategies. She works closely with the students to help them understand each other's feelings. She, Lisa supports the whole child as she works with them to be successful in their academics. Lisa is a true asset to our school, and when we look at the data, over 80% of the students that she has touched can speak to a life-changing experience at Wild Rose as it shows in their grades and their attendance. She continues to improve the students on our campus when it comes to attendance, academics, and attitude. So thank you, Lisa, for being an A++++ employee. Would you like to introduce your family or say something? I want to say one thing. My son was all excited because he thought, oh, we get to go to the raffle. <laughs> <laughs> but my daughter was really excited about the cookies, so it's all good. <laughs> we do this from our heart, and I think everybody knows that. So these kind of things are special, but we do it because we care about kids. Thank you. Every month we get to be introduced to four of our outstanding employees in the district and it's indicative of the outstanding people that we do have working here every day to making sure that the kids in our community get only the best education but they get it from some of the greatest people and so that's what's so much fun about having this here. I'd be remiss if I did not thank uh, Judy Scheffler from Foothill Credit Union um, who is always a supporter of the Monrovia schools. Thank you, Judy, and thank you so much to Foothill Credit Union for all that you do. <laughs> Up next, we have board reports and Mr. Williams. Yes, uh, board member, uh, board president Hammond. I want to put my glasses on because I wanted to share uh, regarding a opportunity that Dr. Tarosian and I had with regards to the Boys and Girls Club. I want to congratulate Alizé Neal, who was a 2016 Youth of the Year in our efforts to impact the children of Boys and Girls Club. Uh, she is a 17-year-old who had a really nice testimony. Uh, I had an opportunity, in addition to Dr. Tarosha, to sit next to Suzanne Hirsch, and we were all teary-eyed based on the things that she had to say. Uh, her activities at Monrovia involved the school orchestra, uh, she's the president of the Gender Sexuality Club and the secretary of the Black Student Union. And from my understanding, and she is headed toward Grand Canyon University in Arizona to study biology and has dreams of becoming an obstetrician. Uh, also, I just wanted to let you know that she was chosen to move on to compete with five others throughout the L.A. County. Uh, congratulations to Alizé Neal 
and she's really a true example of scholarship champion with regards to Monrovia. Also, in addition, I understand that Ashley Sanchez is a part of the U.S. women's soccer team. Uh, was, did I take your thunder away? Okay. In that case, I'm going to continue on. No, just kidding. <laughs> Forgive me. I should have known that the uh, champion's son is sitting next to me here. Uh, but uh, uh, lastly, last night, uh, board member, uh, board president Hammond and I had an opportunity to meet with the Monrovia Rotary Club. And I understand from their uh, fearless leader of the evening, Mr. Darrell Brooks, that the Rotary Auction collected over $17,000 for the school commitment. So truly, we want to thank the uh, Rotary Club. As a Kiwanian, it's hard to say thank the Rotary Club. But uh, this particular moment, I'll just go ahead and slide. So that is my board report this, for this evening. Thank you, Ms. Zuko. Well, notwithstanding, Mr. Williams. Uh, notwithstanding. Uh, <laughs> notwithstanding. Um, so uh, my, our neighbors are the Sanchez's. Ashley and all of her brothers and sisters have gone to Monrovia High School, went to Clifton, Mayflower, and Ashley at about uh, eighth or ninth grade was pulled up to the Olympic Development Program in soccer and um, played on the U.S. women's team in the under 14, under 16s, and uh, she was called up Monday to play in the U.S. women's team, and she'll be playing against Columbia. Um, in the uh, in April, uh, so she is currently still a student with Monrovia Unified um, at uh, Canyon Oaks Mountain Park, and we're proud to have her still as part of the Monrovia family. But um, I, uh, it's it's I don't think I've ever met an Olympian or known one except the other lady lives here in Monrovia, Kim Rhodes. Kim Rhodes, that's the gun shooter, tre st skeet shooter, not gun shooter. <laughs> um, but uh, we're all looking forward to a great uh, world, a women's World Cup. And um, hopefully she'll get to go to Rio in the summertime. But Very cool. Thank you, Brian, for the uh, lovely news article. Who reads newspapers still? This is like hilarious, I by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, we have our student representative, Jacob Laguena, will tell us all the great things that are happening on campus. Thank you. Um, last Wednesday, Monrovia had its open house, and all of our leadership classes were there to help guide parents to classrooms and answer any questions that they had. Um, last Thursday, we had our Mr. Monrovia event. Um, students, family members, and teachers all agreed that this was the best show that they've seen in years. And Renaissance would like to thank um, Miss Donna Baker for her generous donation to the program. Um, yesterday, our leadership classes again um, celebrated Miss Esparza um, for all of her hard, our years of hard work and dedication to Monrovia High School, and so like we congratulate her for that. Um, and then ASB's Pennies for Patients broke its record this year. We raised over seventeen hundred dollars for the Leukemia Lymphoma Society, and all that will be donated to them. Um, for my underclassmen, the SBAC is coming in April. And finally, um, the Environmental Science Club is hosting an e-waste um, collecting, and that will be sometime in April. I'll, I'll give you information on where that will be. Thank you. Thanks, Jacob. Um, up next is public comment. Uh, this is the side that the, this is the portion that the board has set aside for public comment on items that are not on the agenda. Simply fill out a speaker card. You shall be heard. Do we have any speaker cards? We have three requests to speak. The first is from Crystal Hernandez and Gretchen Esparza about integrating bottled water into the free school lunch program. Good evening. Um, if you don't know who I am, I'm Gretchen Esparza. I teach physical education and health at Monrovia High School, and one of our units is on nutrition. And one day, Crystal, who was in my health class, asked me a question about why could she not get water with her lunch instead of having to have milk. And I just said to her, well, I don't know. Why don't we uh, talk about that? And I had a few other students in another class ask the same thing. So they started a petition to see about getting water as part of the lunch rather than having to pay for it, that it would be part of the free lunch program. So we actually had a PowerPoint ready, but um, since Jason isn't here, I guess we can't. Yeah? Oh. Oh, where do you get my? So hi, I'm uh, Crystal Hernandez. I go to Monrovia High School. 
and um, I'm going to present to you our um, proposal to integrate bottled water into the school lunch program. So as soon as we get the PowerPoint up onto the, onto the screen. And just for the viewing audience, we don't ordinarily have PowerPoint presentations during our public comments. Usually those are reserved for public comments. But as uh, our student has put so much effort into it, if it's possible for us to, to present, we will, because it, it is got to be brief. Otherwise, we can bring it back at another time if it doesn't work. OK, um, how many minutes do I have to present just to get a feel for it? Um, Here we go. Oh, thank you. Um, so yeah, like I said, this is a proposal to integrate bottled water into the uh, school lunch program. Um, next slide. Oh, okay. Um, so according to the American Heart Association, uh, the daily um, sugar intake for the average male should be nine teaspoons and for women, six teaspoons. So this is the... Um, recommended amount by the American Heart Association. Um, but the amount of sugar that is found in our school lunch milk um, actually is um, 14 grams for the plain milk, uh, 20 grams for the chocolate milk, and 26 grams for the strawberry milk. Um, so this amount of sugar, um, especially in the chocolate milk and the strawberry milk, it, like pretty much almost exceed the amount that the day, that the American Heart Association recommends. Um, so the additional amount of sugar that the individual will consume during the day should also be considered since there are a lot of added sugars in day-to-day uh, -day food. Um, so on the other hand, Water, it consists of 60% of the human body. It's your most basic biological need. Every system of the body depends on water. Um, and the Institute of Medicine determined that the average adequate intake of water for men is roughly 13 cups a day and for women about 9 cups a day. And of course, it leads to dehydration, you know, when you don't get that adequate amount. And um, a lot of people don't. So our proposal, well, we are not pushing to ban milk from the school lunch program at all. Uh, our proposal simply is to give students who are signed up for the free lunch program an option to choose um, like either a 16-ounce bottle of water or a carton of milk as their free preferred beverage for the day. Um, so we've actually gotten around 300 signatures from the high school altogether. And, um, to our surprise, most of the students and staff members were really in, like, enthusiastic about the idea of, um, of our cause. And even ki um, kids were just like, like, oh, yes, definitely, yes. Um, yeah. So, of course, um, you know, we have fountains at, at our school, but, um, well, sounding like a practical solution, it's a little bit more complicated because um, a lot of the fountains, uh, especially the ones near the cafeteria, are um, kind of unsanitary and a little bit impossible to drink out of. Um, and a lot of kids uh, just don't really want to because they think that it's really, it's kind of unappealing to most students. And uh, those were some pictures of the uh, school fountain. Um, so some alternative interventions, if we cannot um, accomplish this for some reason, is uh, we can implement water refilling stations, which is pictured right there. Um, we can improve water fountains on campus, um, definitely, and um, and then even donating um, donating unwanted milk cartons to local shelters because a lot of students don't really want to drink milk with their lunch, so a lot of students end up throwing it away and tossing it in the trash. So if we can somehow gather up all of these um, unwanted milk cartons, then 
we may be able to donate them to a local shelter and help somebody in need. And that's it. And thank you very much for your time. Crystal, thank you for your presentation. And Ms. Sparza, thank you for, for guiding her. I, I look forward to the information so that we can pass it on to the high school principal who would probably look at it rather than, than the Board of Education. But that would be exactly a great place and good job in your civic mindedness and trying to find alternatives. Thank very you very much. <coughs> thank you. Thank you very much for being here. Um, if Mr. Marchetti could look at those uh, fountains that we saw in the pictures and make sure that they were usable. Mr. Hammond, before you move forward, Dr. DeRosen, do we happen to have a picture of Alizé, Neil? <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Uh, Alizé, I know you're watching. Mr. Techmaster is not here this evening, but uh, no, she was prepared to watch this. Oh, cool. The next request to speak is from Susan Hirsch about Parent and Youth Academy and Healing Connections. Good evening, Mr. Hammond, board members, Dr. Tarosian, cabinet members, and everyone at home. This evening, I greet you as the educational coordinator for the Healing Connections Committee, which is a community-wide organization, a partnership between the school district, the city, community services, area activists, our faith-based organizations, youth organizations, and area service providers. You may recall that annually we do the March for Balance, um, which is going on right now at our campuses. And we kicked off last week, we are springing forward, get it? We're springing forward into a year-round campaign that is going to have quarterly themes with a monthly focus to get to the root causes that could get someone to the point of unfortunately contemplating suicide, which is what March for Balance is all about. Our focus is going forward is more direct influence on those root causes. We're gonna start um, our year-round campaigns with having youth and parent academies once a month directed on that monthly focus. So our first will be on Saturday, April 16th from 8.30 to 11 o'clock. Our first one will be held at Monrovia High School and the focus is mental health and wellness and I'm glad that board member Williams brought up Alize Neal because she is in fact going to be our special guest speaker to open the event. We are going to have two <laughs> workshops that morning, one on removing the stigma of mental health and the other on the direct information about preventing suicide. These workshops are offered in English and Spanish. Again, they are parent and youth, so our youth from both high school and middle school are invited to attend. Parents and youth will have the workshops together. Then we will break into leveled discussion groups led by some of our area service providers. I invite you all to attend. We will have this information through Peach Jar, School Loop, out to every parent through PTA, any venue we can find. We wanna get the word out and have participation community-wide, and thank you for the opportunity to provide this information. Thank you, Susan. The next request to speak is from Ryan Menlove, introducing the MTA Executive Board. Hi, Board President ha uh, Hammond, and uh, members of the board, superintendent, and cabinet, thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak tonight. I don't know if I can hear myself, but maybe it's too loud. Okay, a little bit better. I've been teaching in the district for 16 years now, and it's gone by real quick. Um, in the last couple of years, we have experienced a lot of change and a lot of challenges. We've had almost an entirely new administrative team. Um, we've had the wonderful Common Core Standards come our way, 
and we've had the ever-challenging experience of how the governor is funding um, education in the state today. But if there's one thing I've learned over the last 16 years is the best way to overcome our challenges is to do so together. And in the manner that we teach our kids, and that is collaboratively. Um, there's really no better to accomplish that what we're trying to do except by doing it together. And that's really the, way, the reason I'm here tonight, and there's a few other members here this evening as well that I'd like to introduce you to. And uh, these are people that work with the MTA leadership to help work with teachers to make a difference in our classrooms. And so I'd like to introduce them real quickly, if you don't mind. If I could have the members of the executive board stand up. You don't need to come up here. I don't want to embarrass you too much. But as I spend the opportunity to introduce you, uh, you might have seen their faces, but I wanted to put a name with their face so you know who they are. You might, they might have the occasion to call you once in a while. Um, but I thought I would introduce them to you. Just going from this side of the room, we have Rochelle Munoz, Robert Drew, former teacher of mine, Tom Rosenstein. <laughs> Another former teacher of mine, Gretchen Esparza. <laughs> Ophelia Barajas, and Doug Schmidt. And uh, there are a few who are unable to be here with us this evening. But I wanted to take the moment to introduce them to you. I could also stand up here and list the concerns that we get from teachers on a daily basis, but I know that that wouldn't necessarily do any good. It's not that you wouldn't do any good about it or wouldn't do anything about it. It's just that we know that the process by which things get done really starts at the sites, and it really starts at the district office. And so I wanted to let you know that as an MTA board, that although we do have a lot of concerns, we are doubling our efforts to really try to work together to have those meetings with our site administrators and our district administrators so that way we can um, hopefully work together to solve the challenging growing pains that we all seem to be experiencing these days. Now of course this is a long stretch until spring break. Those, those growing pains oftentimes tend to get a little more painful until spring break. After spring break it seems to lessen up a little bit. It's a long stretch and I know we're all looking forward to that. But our hope as a staff is that you consider us as we work through this together, that we collaborate and that we're all in this together to make a difference for Monrovia, for your kids and for my kids and for the livelihood of the many teachers that here that give their heart and soul to what we're doing here. Thank you so much for all that you do. I know sometimes it's a thankless job for what you do. You spend an awful lot of time um, in your job. So thank you very much. Thanks for being here. Thank you for being here and appreciate you bringing your board so that we can put a name to the face. That's, that's very helpful. Thanks very much. Anyone else wishing to speak to the board on any item that is not on the agenda? We, Sim have, one additional, oh, okay. we have one additional request to speak from David Hart. One of them was kind of on the agenda, but as a came sooner. I wanted to point out that Alizé Neal and Crystal uh, are both former Santa Fe uh, students, and so civic mindedness scholarship do come out of Santa Fe. Uh, so I wanted to point that out, and then just since we're here, uh, you got a champion right here. Mr. Rosenstein was a member of the NCAA championship at Cal Poly Pomona, two years running, I believe. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Coach. <laughs> Anyone else wishing to speak to the board on any item that is not on the agenda? Seeing and hearing no one will close that portion. We'll then pick up the uh, public comment of items that are on the agenda. Simply fill out a speaker form and you shall be heard. Any forms? Anyone wishing to speak to the board on any item that is on the agenda? Seeing and hearing no one will close that portion. We moved item 7.5 up to this portion right here and Dr. Tarosi. Is it okay if we do the 3.4 with the reconstruction update? Did I just roll over that? I surely did. And we can go to maybe this. maybe we can start with if uh, Ms. Canonas will put up the picture of Al Zaniel just from Friday evening. It was a beautiful evening celebrating some uh, wonderful accomplishments and, and contributions of community members, but also the achievement of Alizé was something I was privileged to, to listen to and witness. 
And there's Alize with Mr. Williams and her mom, because of course, you get don't get anywhere alone. It takes a whole family, and, and mom is very, very proud. Wow. Terrence isn't in this one, is he? Terrence isn't in the next picture. Actually, again. I was with Dr. Terrence. <laughs> <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> it was really important to me to get in that picture. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was a great uh, event, and it was uh, nice to be able to share it with Alize, her family, Mr. Williams, uh, Ms. Hirsch, and, and the Boys and Girls Club. So with that, I think we'll um, move over to our reconstruction update with Mr. Marchetti. Excellent. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for uh, allowing me to do this update again as well. Um, we'll start off uh, as we, I keep adding to this PowerPoint as we go through. So the first several slides are just a review of where we've been. This is the auditorium now as, as it's been reopened. Um, this is another picture of the front of the high school, which we um, hope that it looks like that again very soon. Um, these are the uh, two classrooms behind the stage that were opened. Um, along with the auditorium, and there are classes being conducted in those two classrooms, 117 and 119. Uh, this is the interior of the portable classrooms that are on the tennis courts, those six uh, temporary classrooms we have out there. Uh, this uh, is, is the beginning of the reconstruction effort inside. This is the, the, on the picture on the right, the second floor hallway outside the auditorium that has been replaced and is probably 99% complete right now so that we can um, get that balcony open as well as the classroom on the right is the classrooms just on the other side of that hallway that um, this picture is maybe a day or two behind. There's actually uh, ceiling tiles in there now and it's probably 80% uh, complete that we should be able to open those classrooms up here in the next few weeks. Now that'll get us, a comp that's actually the computer lab that's on that second floor there, that, that classroom there. Uh, the counseling office uh, after the fire on the uh, left and as we start the construction of the walls in the counseling office um, that, and we're scheduled to uh, start loading drywall into those rooms uh, Friday with the have to do a one side application of drywall on that prior to the installation work that goes in those walls as well. Mm -hmm. This is the student dining area downstairs that reopened last Monday. Um, is back in full operation at this point. Um, few glitches here and there, but uh, we've worked through it all. This is the attendance office, as well as the principal's office is ready for open. We hope to have uh, Mr. McGinnis back in his office right after spring recess. That's, that's where we're at today. And I, I might add, we are still on schedule for July 17th. Thanks very much. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. I would like to thank Mr. Marchetti and his team and, and of course, Ms. Wu for continuing with these efforts. It's not like you didn't have enough to do already. And when I see that uh, cafeteria, and it is sparkling beautiful. I walked in the other day, and it really was beautiful. Thank you for all you've done to try and get us back into where we should be. I have. Uh, one, two additional items. Uh, Hilda is loading one of them. Whatever comes up, surprise me. Uh, we'll also talk about uh, the early college program at uh, Citrus College. We attended that last Friday and uh, were provided with an overview of AB 288, which allows students to be concurrently enrolled in a high school or receive college credit for a high school class if they are 
uh, going through the, the proper requirements and validations. And students, while in high school, will be able to earn college credit for uh, some of their classes. We've uh, reached out and hoping that some of our staff members meet the qualifications so that we can offer those classes next year. And it is an exciting time. Uh, we also have uh, just a brief overview of Mr. Monrovia. I don't know if I don't know if you recognize this young man, but he's sitting to my left. Mr. Monrovia is, a f is, is really fun, and if you've not been, you really should go. I, we I wish I'd had a, this clip before the event, because I'm sure it would have enticed a lot of people to attend. But, thank you, Heather. <laughs> Jacob, nice to work. <laughs> <laughs> that, that concludes your work. You want to show us any of those moves now? No, okay. <laughs> I mean, if you, get, you can get on stage, you can do it here, too. You know? <laughs> um, we'll take up the matter of the consent calendar. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Motion to second. Is there any discussion? Well, there, there you go. So you stopped me on 7.5. We'll, we'll table that motion in a second for just a moment and take up item 7.5. Ms. Wu. Good evening, Mr. Hammond. And good evening, everybody, including the MTA Executive Board. Welcome to the board meeting. And I would like to invite Ms. Chris Reynolds, the chairperson of the Bond Oversight Committee, to present the annual report to the board and the community. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kristen Reynolds. I'm the chairperson of the Bond Oversight Committee. I'm also a parent of a fourth grader, a sixth grader, and a recent MHS grad, and an active PTA member. Um, I'd also like to introduce another committee member we have here tonight, Judy Scheffler, right? <laughs> Thank you for being here, Judy. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and report on behalf of the Bond Oversight Committee. We meet quarterly to ensure that the bond money is used appropriately. Our meetings are open to the public. We've presented the board with our report for 2015, and I just wanted to share a few highlights with you tonight. This year, the district refinanced the bond with a lower interest rate and was able to save the property taxpayers 2.1 million over the term of the bond. So that was, that was a huge, huge accomplishment this year. Also, Building O, the band and choir room at MHS, the uh, seismic mitigation project has now been completed along with some painting and other cosmetic um, things that needed to be completed. Um, and we are now starting work on the MHS swimming pool, which will include plastering and some lighting work. So those are some of the highlights of um, what our committee uh, reviewed over the year, what the bond funds were able to accomplish. And um, that's about it. So thank you for having me. Any questions? Any questions? Thank you for the year in review, and thank you for the work from throughout this whole year. Thank you. My pleasure. Now we'll take up the matter of consent. We had a motion and a second. Um, is there any discussion? Um, maybe please have a vote. Board Member Wong? Yes. Board Member Zuko? Yes. Board Member Williams? Yes. Board President Hammond? Yes. Motion carries 4-0. Up next, we have a software license agreement, and Dr. Kaiser will give the staff report. Yes, this is for the software license agreement with the Cooper Institute Hosting Services and the Fitnessgram software. Um, the software that we've been using for the Fitnessgram is out of date, and therefore we need to purchase new um, software. The budget implication is $599 per year with a total amount of $5,391 over the course of 10 years, and this will be paid for with lottery funds. Or eight years. With Any lot questions? lottery funds. Please have a vote. A question? No, I was going to make a motion. Do we already do that? 
man, I'm just trying to roll through this, you know. I, I was going to make a motion that we... Yeah, that's okay. Let's go, let's go ahead with that motion. That's a good I idea. feel like I'm in a different Before meeting. Before we now. vote on it, I guess we should. We okay. do it the democratic way. So moved. Second. Now there's any more... Any questions? All right. Board Member Williams? Yes. Board Member Wong? Yes. Board Member Zuko? Yes. Board President Hammond? Yes. Motion carries 4-0. This is one of those episodes that you go, you know, this is how not to do Robert's Rules of Order. <laughs> and it would be so tough, except it's all written down right in front of me, too. All I had to do was follow it. Oh, that's a little embarrassing. Um, up next, item 6.4, and Dr. Kaiser, again, will give the staff report. Uh, Mr. Hammond and board. Um, Dr. Trosian, we are very excited about this item. This item, we are requesting a memorandum of understanding and MOU between the Azusa Unified School District and Monrovia School District concerning the award, allocation, and required use of funds confirmed in the California Career Technical Education Incentive Grant. And this grant will be awarded to our district and the consortium of districts beginning April 5th, 2016 through June 30th, 2017. The amount of this award is 550,000 to be shared among four districts. And the four districts that we're in concert with are Charter Oak and Monrovia, Azusa, and Duarte. Um, with these funds, we will be able to have our teachers go through training with the National Academy Foundation to begin career pathways in our district. Um, and also, we'll be working with the San Gabriel Partnership, um, Economic Partnership, and the Connect Ed Linked Learning Group. And so the funds are, are specifically targeted to help us with the seed money necessary to get our career tech ed pathways firmly planted in our district in a real and viable way. So we're very excited about this. Oh. Any questions? May we please have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Um, one, um, was this the um, grant, was this about tied to coding? And the, was this a different one? Okay, I'm sorry, I, and I, I got lost. With that. Well, what you may be thinking, Board Member Zuko, is that we have been talking about um, as a potential pathway creating an IT pathway yeah. that would include coding and other technologies. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? No. Maybe please have a vote. Board Member Zuko? Yes. Board Member Williams? Yes. Board Member Wong? Yes. Board President Hammond? Yes. Motion carries 4-0. Up next we have Dr. Jackson with the staff analysis. Yes, thank you, Board President Hammond. Uh, I'm taking the opportunity this evening to provide the board with a brief overview of the 2015-16 actual totals for classified employees and certificated full-time equivalents within the district. I will be providing a comprehensive 2016-17 um, actual as well as projections in conjunction with Ms. Wu the, in the business office during the April board meeting. As you recall, the staffing project projections are based on student enrollment uh, for the coming year. So if I can turn your attention to uh, the first document um, that you should be in possession of, it's the classified position control at a glance, um, specifically related to a few different categories. Um, the first one, the administrator category, um, just referencing from 2013 over a three-year period, 2013 to 2015-16, the loss of an administrator was reflected in the elimination of the HR director position. As you recall, we restructured, restructured the HR department. And so next on that document is the clerical position then that we actually created. Um, an HR specialist with the elimination of the HR director position. 
MOT and Vince Marchetti and his department remains uh, status quo. Uh, you, you do, we did realize um, an increase in our special ed, special ed instructional aids um, of a net increase of 15, and that's due mostly in part um, based on the IEP requirements and IE team meeting, adding additional one-on-one -on -one, um, instructional aids um, to support students in the classroom and throughout the course of the day. Uh, food service positions, re uh, one ultimately remains vacant, which is reflected uh, on that document, and therefore, due to a lack of need for it, we have not filled that position. And then finally, uh, the instructional assistant positions over a three-year period, we've increased uh, by nine, and those were doing part to the creation of the Mandarin program down at Plymouth. So we hired uh, a Mandarin instructional assistant. We've hired some additional individuals in the village after school program. We added an additional adult education counselor tech based on um, the money we receive for the adult ed program and the additional support that they are requiring. And then we also added two additional PE instructional assistants with the addition of our PE teacher that travels at the elementary school. And that summarizes the classified uh, positions that we've added. Now, bear in mind, again, those are the numbers you see are representative of employees for on the classified side as we transition to the certificated side those are based on full-time equivalents so they don't they do not necessarily represent uh, people because in some circumstances um, for instance teachers actually job share so in one full-time equivalent you could actually have two people there and so that's not captured uh, in uh, this particular information so then with that said, um, as you see on the administrator side, just again, a three-year period, 13, 14, there were 31.35 uh, roughly um, administrators in the district. That includes uh, site administrators as well as district office uh, administrators. And then currently in 15, 16, you see we realized an increase of two. So that was reflective of adding an additional adult ed uh, administrator funded through the adult ed um, grant and then with the addition of the director of college and career counseling and we funded that through uh, supplemental and concentration grant which had no impact on the general fund Ms. mrs. Wu um, classroom teachers do uh, increases do mostly in part to enrollment at MHS what which, which over the course of the last three to five years I believe was a increase in 71 students uh, and then class size reduction efforts at the elementary schools and I've um, reflected the increase mostly at Monroe um, with five and Monrovia High School with three uh, special ed under special ed teachers is a broad um, category there, so the loss there is mostly due to speech sp speech language pathologists. Our retirements, uh, several years ago we had approximately seven and then we had uh, four retire. Ultimately we were able to actually replace one. So um, we have three that we have not replaced but we contract out through an agency to continue to support our students here. And then we have a loss of an additional position at CLC, one at the elementary level, um, and one at MHS. Instructional coaches, uh, th that number remains status quo, and the seven there are paid for out of supplemental and concentration grant. The librarian at Monrovia High School uh, is a half-time FTE. And then as far as counselors are concerned, in 13-14, uh, we had five at Monrovia High School, two at Canyon Oaks Mountain Park, two at the middle school, one at Adult Ed, and one at the elementary school. And then if you recall, in 14-15, we reduced one counselor at the high school. So then in 15-16, Monrovia High School still housed four, um, but then we added four additional uh, counseling positions due to the three-year counseling grant that we received. And so therefore, you see at, at the bottom then overall, 
Um, actuals from 13, 14 to 15, 16, we had an increase roughly of about 6.78 FTEs. You will receive a, as I mentioned, you will receive a comprehensive um, projection and actuals for the April board meeting as I will be working in conjunction with uh, Mrs. Wu in the business office. Thank you very much. Any questions? Thanks very much. Up next, we have uh, pending board issues. Dr. Tarosian. With the pending board issues, I'd just like to call the board's attention to the LCAP meetings, which are scheduled to begin on April 13th. This is a change from uh, the last meeting. We have a, uh, an LCAP meeting on April 13th. The next one after that is on April 19th, and then on May 10th. It, during these meetings, we'll review our progress towards our goals listed and identified in the LCAP and uh, make the revisions and recommendations to the board. Uh, about the plan itself. Uh, we've also included uh, the a board update notation for uh, AB 329 as requested by uh, board member Zuko. Thank you. Um, our next regularly scheduled meeting will be here in this boardroom on April the 20th at 7 p.m followed on May the 11th and May the 7th. Um, I'm sorry, May the 11th is another board meeting. And on Tuesday, May the 17th, there's a joint personnel board meeting um, where we'll uh, be introduced to the classified employee of the year. Our, um, we will also have a board meeting here in this boardroom on May the 25th at 7 p.m. Some dates to your calendars, uh, the MEO games, which are always outstanding, uh, held at the MHS campus, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. on the 31st of March. It is a, f if you're here and you have the time to go see just a small part of it, it is a fantastic way to spend part of your day. Um, April the 1st, our campuses will be closed in recognition of Cesar Chavez Day, followed by spring break from the 1st through the 8th. Um, we have some open houses that are coming up on the 24th, the 29th, and 31st at Clifton, Plymouth, and Canyon Early Learning Center um, on the and then on May the 3rd and May the 19th, Brad Oaks and Santa Fe Middle School. This evening, um, we have a list of very distinguished people who made a considerable amount of their lives um, here in the Monrovia Unified School District who passed away since our last meeting. And so this evening will be adjourning in the memory of uh, Mel Bogman who passed away. Uh, Mel worked for the district for 30 years as a teacher at Monroe Elementary School and as an elementary principal at Huntington Elementary School, Plymouth Elementary School, Bright Oaks Elementary School, and Santa Fe Middle School. We will also be adjourning in memory of Carolyn Starbird, uh, wife of our city manager, Jim Starbird, who was a fantastic lady. Um, she passed away recently. She worked for the district for 18 years. She was a former instructional aide at Monroe and worked at the school office as a school office manager at Mayflower Elementary School. Um, and one that really pains a lot is the loss of Cameron Turner. Um, I met Cameron a, a number of years ago. Um, he was the PTA president at Monroe. And if you ever get to meet a champion of youth, and we have a few champions of youth here in this audience tonight, um, very special human being, um, talented um, and eloquent, uh, he had uh, did TV shows, he did writing for TV shows, but you would never know that he was that person on campus because he was just dad and just a very, very special human being. And um, I will tell you, heaven is better off and earth is poorer because of the passing of Cameron Turner. And if there's no further business before this body, we will stand adjourned at 836.